What's going on, YouTube? You're back with the Shades, and we're going to continue our Let's Play of Katawa Shoujo. Last time we left off, we just got to Act 2 of the game, of the of this route, which I'm guessing means we were finally on Hanako's route officially. And uh, we watched the fireworks show, which is really nice. I always enjoy a good fireworks show. Anyway, my alarm blares into my ears, only to be swiftly silenced by my fist. My body switches into auto mode, carrying my subconscious self out of bed and into my uniform. As always, my bottles of pills sit on my desk patiently, waiting for me to take them and pick up my daily dose of medicine. 17 pills a day. Jesus. I can't imagine. But the thing is, like, I, I know that, like, with medicine, especially, like, like the more, like, ones that are, like, serious medicine, you, it, it tends to be that this one does one thing but adds a side effect. And then there's a lot of medicines to, to stop the side effect. And it's just a chain. Um, but, like, I'm guessing that's what's happening with Hisao, especially since, like, this condition is, hey, my heart could skip beats and die, like, at any moment. Before I know it, I'm opening the door to the class 3-3. Glad to see that I'm not the only one who seems to be a little hungover from festival week. Every, every face in the classroom looks gaunt. With the festival now over, it's as if everyone's life's dreams have been achieved. With nothing left to live for, the students have relied on instincts alone to guide them through to class. Or maybe I'm just reading too much into it. No, that's fair. Like, for me, like, I, I'm so thankful that the clubs I, were in, I was in in college, like, all the events they had were usually on weekends. Usually. Like, sometimes they weren't, but that's not, that wasn't a big deal. But, like, because they were on weekends, it's like, we, we, we spent all this time on prep, we plan it all out, um, and then, like, we have to set up the event... And then next thing you know, uh, like, um, like you you have the event. It's tiring. Like you you're you're all jazzed up during the event because it's like it's our event. We gotta make it happy so that everyone who comes here may want to join the club or just at least have fun. And then when the event is over and we're done with cleanup, it's like, ugh, you just like like we go back to our dorm rooms and just like like chill and like that like like it's 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 genuinely draining to have constant events. So I can't even imagine a week of it, but let a, like I, I can imagine a, a day, but I can't imagine a week. I slowly make my way to my seat, and it's only then that I realize why the room is so peaceful. The seats beside me are blissfully empty. The world's loudest interpreter for the deaf has yet to arrive. Up oh, there she is. <laughs> Just as I'm about to sit down, the door files op flies open, revealing a resplendent Misha. Drills Bobby from the dramatic entrance, and her arms stretch toward the sky. Yahoo! It's all over. It would appear that not everyone is affected by the post-festival depression. The rest of the class glare at her, obviously thinking the same thing I am. Misha is still frozen in the doorway, with her arms still in the air, and nervously looks around. It's obvious that she senses the foul mood, but can't work out exactly what to do. Suddenly, she jerks forward. Hey! As she stumbles into the classroom, she reveals Shizune, arms extended from where she shoved Misha. Thanks for the entertainment, but shouldn't you two take your seats? Still slightly embarrassed, Misha takes a few seconds to realize she has to translate. Oh yeah, Shichan says she's not happy with you ditching us last week. We were really busy. Is that so? What about the stuff I already did for you two? She says that only counts for council members. Since you declined, she doesn't owe you anything. Misha leans closer and whispers conspiratorially into my ear. Actually, I think she's just a little sore that you didn't spend the day with her. She's really thankful for your work last week, though. Sensing that she's being talked about, she's lightly wraps her finger on the desk until Misha turns around to face her. I, could t I can't understand any of the fast-paced signing that's going on, but from she's a slightly embarrassed expression, Misha's poorly contained and Misha's poorly contained more poorly contained laughter. I can guess. While this exchange is happening, the door opens again, but this time it's at a much more reasonable pace. Monica <laughs> quietly enters the room and pulls the door closed behind her. Peering out from under her hair, she quickly scans the classroom. Our eyes meet and she suddenly stiffens. She closes her eyes, takes a deep breath, and then walks over to my desk. G Good morning, Hisao. Morning, Hanako. You're a little late, aren't you? I was talking to Lily. About today. Ah, so we've got her list then. We can leave straight after class in that case. Sure. I'm looking forward to it. Hanako briefly flashes her embarrassed smile at me, then hurries off to her seat. What a cutie. I'm gonna keep saying she's adorable. She is adorable. She's like a baby sister. I want to give her a hug. A big hug. The huggiest hug. <laughs> That's why I work out. I'm gonna be so good. I'm gonna be so good at hugging. <laughs> During classes, it becomes apparent that it's not only the students that are a little despondent after the festival. Muto simply gives us a list of exercises from the textbook, then sits behind beside his desk. 
I totally forgot about the brief lunch period for a moment. This is such a banality of the day. It's, it's mind-numbing and everyone seems surprised when the bell signals the end of the lessons. As I'm packing my bags, Shizuna and Misha flank and entrap me. Say Hee-chan is still not too late to join up. There's a lot of post-festival paperwork for us to complete. Uh, sorry, Misha, I've got plans. As I'm sensing the queue, Hanako appears behind me, holding a small bag and trying to avoid eye contact with the outside world. Misha's eyes open wide, then she bursts into laughter. <laughs> you move fast, don't you, Hee-chan? We won't disturb your date any further. <laughs> Behind the roaring Misha, I see she's taking far too little interest in the scene. I might be taking this the wrong way, but I think she's deliberately ignoring me. I feel a tug at my shirt and see Hanako's eyes fixed firmly on the floor. Let's... Gotcha. Uh, she's named Misha, I'll see you later. And I'm still not interested in the council. Spoil sport. I got a notification. Get rid of all these. Misha and Shizune retreat into the hallway, happily signing to each other. Got all your stuff? Let's head off. Flo floods of students pour out of the school gates and onto the road. It's a little weird. It's almost a scene from any other high school, but the illusion fades because of the occasional wheelchair or missing limb. One thing I do notice is that nobody is alone. As And as Hanako and I pass through the gates, I notice that she closes the distance between us. Not enough to be considered close, but she certainly is at, isn't at her usual, just a little far position. I guess we're not familiar enough for her to get as close as she does with Lily. However, even though she has moved a little closer to me physically, mentally, she seems to have traveled a mile. Her hands clutch down around the leather straps of her bag to the point of whitening her knuckles, her head down and her mouth pursed closed. She's almost like she's being walked to the principal's office for the first time. I try to stifle a giggle at the thought, but it's futile. What's the matter? There's no point in hiding it. Sorry, for a second it looked like you were getting trouble. Get for a second there, it looked like you were getting in trouble. What do you mean? I think you need to relax a little. We're not going too far, and it's only students around, right? Right. It bothers me a little to see Hanako so worked up. And you do this every week, don't you? Yes, with Lily. Of course, with Lily. I wonder if she had ever left the school without her. It doesn't seem like much at first glance, but Hanako's dependence on Lily is absurdly heavy. If she can't even handle living this, leaving the school without her, how would she even match to survive if the two had never met? Would she have found someone else to latch on to? And what draw, drew her to Lily? Was it her lack of eyesight, or was it Lily just kind, kind enough to lend a hand? I wonder if anyone would have, a fit, would have fit the bill. Well, I'm here. Besides, we're not going far. It'll be over before you know it. Hanako's knuckles slowly regain their color as she tries to hide a small smile, but the effort of that seems to prevent further conversation. We travel side by side down the winding road toward the town. A crowd of students thins as we continue along the sidewalk. Faster students rush ahead, and the less mobile ones fall behind, rarefying the crowd into nothingness. By the time we, re we reach the convenience store, we are practically alone. Hello, uh, fake 7-Eleven. Using me as a shield between herself and the attendant, Hanako moves through the narrow aisles, adding an assortment of items into her basket. Bread, milk, tea, thyme? What kind of convenience store sells herbs? Then again, nothing about this town seems normal, which may not be such a bad thing in retrospect. Everything is so different and uncomfortable, dwelling on such matters isn't really an option. When I think about it, it reminds me of Hanago. No matter how much you try, you can't escape her scars. They still inter interrupt my train of thought when I see them. As much as I don't want to admit it myself, I think I'm forcing myself to try not to try to ignore them. Not that I'm a, that I'm scar free myself. The jagged down the jagged line down my sternum will never completely fade away. I just have the luxury of being able to hide it easily. But in in a way, both of our scars remind me that we're in all we're all in this place for a reason. Hanako throws one last item into her basket, then sheeply holds it out to me, along with a few banknotes. Could you... please? It takes me a second to understand what she's trying to say. Oh, you want me to pay for this? She nods, but doesn't look up. I guess this task falls to Lily on the usual occasions. Sure, let me just grab a couple things. I hastily, I hastily grab a few items for myself and head to the counter with Hanako in tow. The attendant gives me an indifferent nod as she scans the items. I suppose just ignoring us is one day to deal with is one way to deal with the an anomalies of Yamaku. They must get a lot of students here, being the closest store to the school. The staff must have all their own way of dealing with us. Maybe they don't. Maybe it's only me who thinks twice about my unique schoolmates. Our transaction complete, Hanako and I head back onto the street. The road is pretty much abandoned now. The students were, that were heading out have already left, and nobody has started returning just yet. And with only a school ahead on the road, there doesn't seem to be anyone else around. The emptiness certainly reflects on Hanako, her arms by her side, each carrying a bag, her head no longer bowed, and back up to the upright position. It's almost as if she were enjoying this walk. 
So, why all these weird things? McSpice? Why would you need that in school? I... sometimes... like to make food. Well, yeah, so do I, but... spices? Uh, that's a little more advanced, don't you think? N not really. Well, I think it's cool. You'll have to teach me one day. Sure. She doesn't seem all that sure, but pushing the point doesn't seem all that wise. At the very least, she seems a great deal happier than she did on the walk down here. That alone makes me a little happier. Outside the girls' dorm, Hanako and I sort out the grocery bags with our respective purchases. Aw oh, man, I just realized that when it gets bad, like so far in every route, he still gets a little upset because of something that the girl does, or something that's not connecting for some reason. And like that's typically like the bad portion of like the whole we're starting a relationship and blah 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 blah. And like sometimes he still gets legitimately angry, and I'm just like something yeah and like yeah he, he like the last few times he kind of deserves to be like he kind of it's justified in his anger but i'm like with hanukkah i'm just like i don't want he's to get angry at hanukkah she seems so small i don't want to i don't want her to cry she she's so small and fragile and i just want to hug her <laughs> outside the girls dorms hanukkah and i sort out the grocery bags with our respective purchases in comparison mine look my things look positively plain I'll t i tell you you're putting me to shame here no, I'm not. I, I just... I'm only joking. I have a stack of homework that I skipped last week, so I, I, gotta, I must leave now. That's such an awkward phrasing. I must leave now. <laughs> Will you be alright getting to, uh, to your room? Yeah. Sure? Okay, then. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. We part ways and I return to my room. The piles of paper sit upon my desk, begging to be completed. With the entire ruckus of the last week, I barely had time to catch up. I tried to keep up with my studies while I was in the hospital, but some of the stuff I've never seen before, even back in my old school. Totally prepared, I pop the top of a can of drink and get to work. Yeah. How to go, best girl. Confirmed. The days are really starting to heat up. This morning I awoke covered in sweat. By the time the student body starts leaving their dorms for breakfast and morning duties, the sun is already taking full effect. Oh yeah, it puts me in high spirits. It's not even 8, yet I feel like that this day is going to be one of those pleasant, tranquil, warm ones. If I weren't at school that considered every absence from class as a sign of life-threatening situation, I'd consider skipping the whole day just and just relaxing in the school gardens. Yes, today will be a genuinely lazy day. For a second, I stop in mid-stretch and consider the, the, the nurse's warnings about exercise. Maybe I should have kept up those morning jogs. Running with someone like Emmy might have been a little testing, but if I worked at my own pace... Nah, who am I kidding? I couldn't stick to something like that without some kind of motivation. It's not like I sat around all day, and, to, and the walk to and from the convenience store counts as exercise, right? Especially the walk back up the hill. Yeah, it's no big deal compared to my months lying in a hospital bed. I'm getting plenty of exercise. You should all exercise, people, even if it's, even if it's just a 15-minute walk. It seems that I'm not alone in my appreci appreciation of the day. Nearly every member of the class is glancing through the window and into the tantalizing sky. Even the steadfast Shizune seems to lack her usual vigor for schoolwork. Misha, as brazen as ever, has even buttoned, unbuttoned the top of her top buttons of her shirt and is fanning herself with a notebook. It must have been I must have been staring because now she's now sticking her tongue at me. However, she shows no sign of halting her efforts, nor is she trying to hide the fact. The lunch bell seems to catch everyone by surprise, and the class empties at a much slower pace than usual. Why? Is, like, was, like, is Misha busty or something? Uh. Luckily, on the Katawa Shoujo main website, uh, there a it actually sh shows all the girls' measurements. Which is kinda creepy! Oh, just, she's fairly busty, I guess. Why is there blood type on this? Also, everything's in metric, so I'm not quite sure how how much people, how tall people are. Hanako is 164 centimeters tall. Uh, she's 5.3 feet. Hmm. She's like five something. And her bust is eighty and her bust is eighty six centimeters. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Lunch bell seems to catch everyone by surprise, and the class empties at a much slower pace than usual. The heat seems to be draining the need to rush from everyone. Well, almost everyone. He, he sao? 
Hey there, Hanako. What can I do for you today? Hanako already has her lunch bag in hand. I don't have to be a detective to work out where this is going. Um, would you like to have lunch with us again? I I brought it up for everyone. Awesome. You don't have to be so stiff about it, though. Ah, uh, right. I take it we're going to the tea room? P please. Lily said she'll meet us there, so we should... 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 Should go together. Sounds like a plan. The heats may be pretty hungry. Hanukkah breathes, breathes a sigh of relief, and, and I gather my things together. As usual, the aura of the tea room is refreshing, feeling isolated from the rest of the world. Then again, the usual din of the school seems to be a bit subdued, most likely from the laziness promoted by heat exhaustion. Hanukkah slowly spreads her food on the table, intently focusing on every little movement, as if she's trying to keep her mind off her other thoughts. It's not much, but I can tell from her demeanor that she has prepared everything with utmost care. I guess Lily isn't here yet. Should we start without her? Sh she'll be here soon. Hanako struggles with the lid of the container of rice. Here, let me help with that. I take the container from Hanako's hand and try to force open the lid. Try as I might, it seems wedged shut. Let me guess. Did you put this in while the rice was still hot? Yes, I was in a rush. I put the container on the table between us. I thought so. Looks like it's wedged shut. Uh, we'll need some hot water to get it open. But that could be a pain in here. We get water everywhere. Well, in that case, how about I contribute to today's meal? At the door, Lily seems to be seem smile. Lily, 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 Lily. Lily smiles while holding up a bag stocked with various buns and bread rolls. I can't help but do the same. Since you two had a change of plans because of me, I thought I would bring a little something. Thanks, Lily. Here, let me get that for you. With a little guidance, Lily's bread assortment joins Hanako's riceless platter. I hastily make some tea to complete the picture. Well, I'm looking forward to this. As I take a bite, I notice Hanako trying her hardest not to look like she's looking at me. It's nothing special, but then again, I can't really complain. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to cooking for myself. Not bad. I guess this is made with the stuff you bought yesterday. Yes. Hanako's eyes shout at me, begging for some kind of feedback. Well, it was clearly worth it. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Well, it was clearly worth it. Thanks, Hanako. I... I wanted to show you this after yesterday. It's okay. It was just a little surprised that I was just a little surprised at all the stuff you were buying. Hanako's always like to experiment when it comes to food. I think it's good most of the time. While Lily's smile doesn't waver, the slight change in her tone tells me that things have not gone so well in the past. And it's not like Hanako has many people to sample her cooking. Hang on, was Lily waiting for me to go first? She didn't start eating until after I said it was all right. Her cheeky grin tells me that this was a deliberate action on her part. I'll have to try and work out how to get one over on her in the future and to make up for this. Well, it's good, and that's what counts, right? Right. Lily, satisfied at not being the first to sample Hanako's creation, begins to consume the food in front of her. I find myself staring as I watch her chopsticks gently touch the plate, their tips delicately poking and tracing to quickly ascertain the positions of the food as she dexterously picks it up. Oops. Woo! One might think she was a child playing with her food, if not for the situation. Though, she do she does it with such care and thoughtlessness that it's obvious that she it's simply how she eats this, <coughs> eats this kind of meal. Not wanting to miss out, I start filling my up myself. Hanako takes a different approach, waiting until Lily and I have our hands clear before quickly snatching up her share. Before long, the containers are empty, save for the still shut rice container. Thank you, Hanako. That was filling. No, thank you for the bread. Yes, it would be a disaster if not for that. You're both welcome. But now, I must be getting back. It's far too easy for it to be late for after eating here. Yeah, I see what you mean. I think we'll just clean up here, then head off. Well then, good day. Lily leaves, her cane tapping away down the quiet hall. Hanako and I quickly pack our things and stay seated, waiting for the bell. Together, we stare out the window into the endless azure sky. <sighs> If it weren't for the peeling of the bells, I would have sworn that the time had stopped. The urge to skip class rises in my gut. I shoot a glance at Hanako, who shows no sign of moving either. Not just yet. The interval between the warning bells and the end of lunch bells passes in a blink of an eye. We really should go. People will freak out and start a search party if we skip. Hanako sighs. You're right. She slowly she rises to her feet and I follow suit. Silently, we make our way up the old stairs to the third floor and then to our classroom. At the door, I take, it to point, take point and open the door ahead of Hanako, bowing my head to an apology in advance. Sorry we're late, teacher. I am greeted by not, not by stern words nor by angered instructions to take my seat, but simply by the silence created by 15 or so students trying not to laugh. Muto ever tardy has yet to arrive. However, the fact that Hanako and I have arrived together is blatantly obvious. Pfft, pfft, 
making that about 14 students trying and one student failing. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> the lovers return. I'm not gonna do the loud laugh. Yeah, thanks. You can calm down now. I stepped through the door and realized that Hanaga was firmly pressed against my back, hiding herself from the class. With my steps coming closer to my desk, she eventually breaks from me and stiffly writes, walks to her own. Her efforts to mentally block everyone's presence from her mind are written fairly, fairly clearly on her face. Quickly checking the door for any signs of the teacher's arrival, I make a trip to Hanako's desk and whisper in her ear. Don't worry about Misha. She's always like this. I enjoy myself today. Don't sweat it, okay? Hanako nods her head behind her folded arms, but she still doesn't show her face. I yearn to stay and console her more, but Muto picks this exact moment to enter the class halfway through his lecture, as if he started started in, in the hallway. Which, of course, is directly proportional to change, but inversely proportional to the square of the distance. He's so engrossed in his speech that doesn't even notice me sneaking back to my seat from Hanako's desk. While Muto's spot spiel rambles on, Misha leans over to me. The teacher may not have noticed your tardiness, but I did. That is much as obvious from the show you just put on. I have been instructed to let you off the hook for today, but only on one condition. Oh, and what would that be? You have to help us this afternoon. I cram my neck to look over Misha's shoulder. She's is conveniently not making eye contact with me. Fine, just for today. I've already told you that I'm not joining the council, remember? Of course, doing so could be considered, um, considered. She looks down at her notebook, obviously looking for her place in her script. Under duress and hence would be against regulations. How very strange of you to be considerate of regulations now. Think she'd be done by the book. It's just that the book hasn't been written for every situation, so there are times when it can can be ignored. And yet you two wonder why no one else wants to be in the student council. Sit the fuck down, girly. After poking her tongue out at me, Misha returns to her workbook, and we battle our way through the letter, the latter half of the school day. The letter. Great visual novel. <laughs> Before I can even stand up, Misha and Shizne have placed their hands on both my shoulders. Hey, I said to help. I, hey, I said to help out. Damn. This is just insurance. He's out. Insurance. He's out. Hanako timidly tries to leave the room by circling around us, and I suddenly realize that this may be my one chance to escape. Oh, hey, Hanako, what's up? <laughs> hey, what makes you think you got the time to chat? Oh, relax. This won't take long. Sorry, Hanako, you were saying. I I was going to the library today, and I thought. Hanako's thumbs dance around each other and her eyes flit around, around, around the room, looking everywhere but at us. Sorry, Hanako, but Has he has to come with us. He's got work to do. Oh, but you can help too if you'd like. Um, so how about it, Hisao? Uh, uh, really? What do you think, Hanako, is the correct answer? Surprising. Because, like, in my mind, I would have been like, oh, I'm gonna brush these guys off. But then I guess, like, because, like, to be more mindful of Hanago. But, like, I guess, like, giving her the choice is better as well. <clears throat> what do you say, Hanako? If we all help, it shouldn't take out long at all. Yeah, Hanako's fidgeting answers my question before she can even form the words. I, I really need to go. Well, that was to be expected. Looks like it's just me and the council girls again. It's easier to resign myself to another afternoon's work in a small council office. I'll catch up with you later, okay? Uh, okay. Right, now that the farewells are over, it's work time. Misha and Shizne frog march me to the student council office, never once letting go of my shoulders. I feel bad for ditching Hanako like this, but if this is the price of getting Misha off her back, so be it. So then, what are we up to today? D debrief! Huh, isn't that supposed to happen after something? Yup, but if they call in all the information from the festival so that Shishan can debrief the teachers. Shizune drops a large pile of paperwork on the desk in front of me and smiles succinctly. You need to sort out these, the, sort out those into two piles. One for the financial stuff, like receipts. One for feedback. One for positive feedback. Uh, and maybe one for things that look like they could be problems next year. One for problems that probably won't be able to be fixed. That's a few more than two piles. Huh? All right. Yeah, I thought there would only be two piles. My bad. Right. While I'm doing this, what will you two be doing? Well, we missed lunch because we were all collecting all these reports, so we're going to get some food. Why didn't you just sort them out while you were collecting them? Thankfully, my self-defense mechanism kicks in and prevents me from opening my mouth and further worsening my situation. Eh? How's that fair? I was fretting over the unfair distribution of work so much that I didn't notice that Shizne had kept on signing. If it weren't for Misha's outburst, I probably wouldn't have noticed at all. Shizne seems to be delivering a fairly long string of commands to Misha, and none of them look pleasant. 
Reaching a conclusion, Misha slides briefly back to Shizde that sits down on the next de desk next to me. Shizde waves to the both of us before disappearing out the door. What was that all about? Shisha was worried that you'd get all it all wrong unless you were supervised. And since she can't tell you how you are messing things up, she's making me stay. Aw, oh, bummer. I wanted to go with Shichan. But she's going to bring us back some food. How good is that? Misha's flippancy is out of this world, from down in the dumps to on top of the world over some calories. It's hard to imagine how anyone could operate at that level. Well, it could have been worse. Oh, so what are we supposed to be doing? Collation! I gathered that. Well, let's start by making piles. We'll work out what the piles mean later. Right. We'll start to, we start to separate all the papers into increasingly complex piles. At first, it's just simple categories. Financial, feedback, incident reports. Then they all split apart to good-bad reports and further still until it starts to look like we've just thrown papers onto the desk. This is hopeless. Huh? Why? We're doing what we were told, right? Yeah, but it looks like we're just making a mess. No, I think we got a lot done. Chichen will be able to work out the rest from here. So I think we can stop about here then. It's almost as if Misha's common sense left the room with Chizne. Still, there's no point in arguing. Anyway, what's the deal with you and Hanako? Deal. You were hanging out with her today, weren't you? Has there, have there been any fireworks? Any gossip that you're withholding from me? If I told you about my own circumstances, it wouldn't be gossip, would it? I guess not. We're just friends, I guess. Why are you so interested? I thought you and Chizne didn't like her. It's not really like that. You know, Shichan and Lily don't get along well. And since you can't, yeah, you can't really get Hanako away from Lily, we don't talk to her much. But that doesn't mean I can't be concerned for her. What is there to be concerned about? Well, she never hangs out with anyone else, right? It's no good, Hee-chan. If she's and Lily dislike each other because their personalities are different, then I hate to think how Misha and Hanako would get along. I mean, in one way or the other, we're all in the same boat here, right? Well, I guess. This one time when she left the class halfway through, she just went to the teacher and asked what she was going to be done about it. He said that every student there here has special needs and that Shisha shouldn't worry herself about it. Hanako never does any group work, she just runs off. Isn't that good enough to be concerned about? I guess you're right. She hardly says a word when we're talking. Well, that's more than I've been able to do. Shija and I both tried when she started, and she got scared off and ran. I consider telling Misha that, ex that exactly the same thing happened with me, but she seems to be caught up in thought. Listening to Misha without Shija's influence is... interesting. I think she needs to realize that people here don't care what she looks like, and sh that she could trust us. If she could, I'd feel a lot, be a lot better about her. I think this is the longest I've ha watched Misha without her seeing her sign. When she's with Shizne, she's constantly waving her hands about, explaining the world to Shizne. That amount of effort probably places a strain on even an agile mind. And let's face it, Misha isn't the world's brightest spark. Well, I'll keep an eye on her for you. But you probably should You should probably apologize for earlier. I don't think Hanukkah's cut out for that kind of joke. Oh? Uh, oh? Oh. I didn't even notice. Sorry. Don't say it to me, just mention it to her. Alright, first tomorrow I'll speak to her. Good. A cacophony from the door heralds the return of Shizne. I guess that she can't really tell how much noise she's making. Oh, Shichan, you're back! And I'm gonna end the part here. I'm literally three minutes over, uh, but then again, that's why I have a 25 minute timer, so if I have to happen to go into 30 minutes, it's not a big deal. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me from the series, hit the subscribe button, and turn to exit the Shadyverse. My name is Shades, and I hope you've enjoyed your day in the Shades. See you guys next time. Bye!